I am me. I will never pretend to be another. I will never want to be another. I will not change who I am just to fit in. I am me. I am not perfect, but I'm working on myself, working to become the best version of myself. When it comes to autism, <laughs> finding the right words can be tough. Finding understanding doesn't have to be. With your help, we can increase understanding and acceptance of people with autism. Learn how you can help create a brighter life on the spectrum. Go to AutismSpeaks.org. April 15th regularly scheduled board meeting. We do want to, after the sad news that we heard of our long-term serving city councilor for District 1 for the Columbus Consolidated Government, we want to pause uh, for a moment of silence as we are, have been asked to keep his family in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you so very much, and we'll let uh, his work and his legacy and support for public education be our inspiration and inspire us all. Um, our Pledge of Allegiance and character work will be presented to us by Matthews Elementary School. Please stand. Oh, wait a minute. 
Oh, okay. Okay, I thought they were leaving. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Messiah Price. This, today, this month we were talking about integrity. In order for your light to shine, you need to have integrity. When I say light up, you say light up. Light it up. Light it up. Light it up, 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 light it up. Yeah, you know, I know you feeling it. Hanging with my friends and you know we be getting it. You might be feeling down, gonna turn that to a smile. You're gonna be so happy, you'll be running down the aisle. No negativity, no drugs, no bullying. There's so much more to you. I believe in you, let me encourage you. I see you thriving, soaring higher like a shooting star. I see you going far, this generation, changing nations, dream big, keep believing, you can achieve it, breaking barriers, making history, yeah, you know, I know, you feeling it, hanging with my friends, and you know we be getting it, you might be feeling down, gonna turn that to a smile, you're gonna be so happy, you'll be running down the aisle, Every day the sun gon' shine on you. Light it up. Light it up. Light it up. Every day the sun gon' shine on you. Light it up. Light it up. Light it up. Light it up. I can't hear you. This is Messiah Price, and he's in third grade. He's in my class, and, and he wrote this. Wow. And, and not only did he perform it at our talent show, but he won. I know it's not a surprise. He was a little bit um, nervous today, but he was all over the stage on that, if you could just imagine. <laughs> so he's got a future, so remember the name, Messiah Price. My name is Messiah Price. My name is Reagan Pittman. My name is Zion Price. My name is Jordan Shepard. Well, let me just say before you go, um, rapper, composer, Mr. Price. That is super awesome, and I, and I love it that you brought your friends, and I'm sure they're your fans since you won, along with you. And for the parents, if you would please stand so that we can recognize you, the parents of these, of these children. Thank you, parents, uh, to all, parents of all the children. I only saw one parent stand up, but... Okay, yeah, parents of all children. I, <laughs> there we go, okay. Thank you for all that you do in supporting public education and great job to our Matthew Scholars. And so, who, who do your teacher, who, did you introduce yourself or did you just say you were the teacher? I'm a science teacher and I'm also responsible And that was just your name is what we were trying to get to. Jamie, Jamie Holmes. Jamie Holmes, all right. <laughs> And Miss Green is the principal. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you all so very much for all that you do.
All right, we have 1.05. Um, we need a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Ms. Chambers, second by Ms. Buckner. All in favor, raise your hand. All right, that passes. District recognitions. All right, up first is the school library proclamation for 2024. I have to follow Messiah. He was great. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Okay, good evening. My name is Marissa Brookins, and I'm the K-12 content specialist for School Library Media. And I'm proud to be here today to read the School Library Month proclamation. Our School Library Media specialists are not only certified teachers. They are also resource curators, program directors, project managers, technology support specialists, and inventory managers, and they're often asked to tap, they're tasked with roles above and beyond those. The libraries of today have evolved from quiet reading spaces into active hubs with STEAM centers, collaborative games, instructional partnerships, and more. I consider it a privilege to support the 52 media specialists in their schools. So before I read the proclamation, I would like to acknowledge the media specialists who were here able to come today and the ones who are tuning in digitally. So if you will please stand, my media specialist, if you're here. Thank you for all you do. And now for the proclamation. Whereas April 2024 has been designated the 39th annual National School Library Month, and whereas school libraries provide materials for teachers and students that will encourage growth and knowledge, and whereas school libraries, li school libraries provide materials that will develop literary, cultural, aesthetic appreciation, and ethical standards, and whereas school libraries provide materials which reflect the ideas and the beliefs of religious, social, political, historical, and ethnic groups, and their contributions to the American and world heritage and culture. And whereas school libraries provide books to encourage children to read for pleasure. And whereas school libraries provide materials to meet individual needs, varied interests, abilities, socioeconomic backgrounds, and maturity levels of the students that are served. And whereas school libraries are a fun place for students to go, and all students deserve a well-managed library to provide for free expression and access to ideas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Muskogee County Board of Education and the Muskogee County Superintendent of Schools declare that the month of April 2024 as School Library Month, and therefore urge each of Muskogee County Schools to recognize and support this action and to participate throughout the month of April in the celebration of National School Library Month. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Now I get to stay up here and roll right into the recognitions um, because I get to present the Muskogee County School District Library Media Specialist of the Year Award. Um, and it's always such an honor to do so, especially during um, School Library Month. So as a former school media specialist myself, I know just how much heart and dedication it takes to develop a program that both impacts students and supports teachers. I'm excited to have a high school winner this year because it highlights that quality library programs impact students in all grades. While circulation numbers tend to lessen as students get older and books get longer, students' need for access to reliable information, technology, and research support only increases. Amanda Klope at Jordan High School, this year's District Media Specialist of the Year, embraces her role as both support and leader in an inspiring manner. Amanda has partnered with our public library system to provide programming and resources such as library card sign-up events and STEAM centers. She has hosted book clubs and other reading-related events like virtual author visits and applied for and received grants for free books. 
Amanda collaborates with teachers to support content-related needs, such as teaching lessons to strengthen research and technology skills as her students prepare for college, the military, or the workforce. She also served on a team that helped design our new district library media program guide. If you walk into Jordan's newly renovated media center today, you can observe a 3D printer or resin printer in, at work, or you might see Amanda supporting the journalism students as they prepare for the weekly news segment. You may also run into work-based learning students who assist in the media center as they learn and use valuable workplace skills. I could go on and on, but I know we have more on the agenda. So I'll end by expressing my gratitude to Amanda for the relationship she's building with our students and the foundation she's supporting as they prepare for adulthood. And while Amanda came prepared for the district award, I would also like to share that we recently learned she is being honored by the Georgia Library Media Association as the West Central Library Media Specialist of the Year as well. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. This honor is well deserved. Thank you, Amanda. And thank you all. Um, any family or friends, Ms. Lofton? Family? Um, my husband and my family are. You have to stand, family. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for the way you represent our entire school system. Congratulations again. And I know we're going to go on next, but I do want to recognize um, our director of library, Alan Harkness, and our director of the museum, uh, Marianne Rickner. Just wave, because thank you all. And the principals or leadership team who are in here, I want to thank you all if you would just wave or stand. We, drove, we just drove right past you into a moment of silence. So. <laughs> Thank you all for what, all that you do. Good evening. I am Kimberly Wright, Director of Communications, and this is our April Board Recognitions. Alexandria Lofton. Congratulations, Alexandria, from Columbus High School for being selected among 36 girls nationwide to participate in an exclusive, invite-only national team tryout in Charlotte, North Carolina, securing one of the 18 spots on the team's USA's Junior Olympic National football, Flag Football Team is an outstanding achievement. Additionally, being the first female athlete from Georgia to represent the country in this capacity makes this accomplishment truly historic. Best wishes as you prepare to compete in Los Angeles in July for the Junior Olympic flag football game. Your success is a source of pride to the district, city, state to represent at the national level. Outstanding. <laughs> so much for supporting me um, you know it means a lot that Muskogee County is taking the time out to represent and um, shout out students here I also want to say a big thank you to Columbus High School for preparing me for this opportunity and my coach career right here he goes everywhere with me when I'm traveling so he really makes me a better person um, and definitely a better athlete I've taken on all his playing styles and that makes me really a fluent player so yeah, thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, coach. Parents, family and friends. Congratulations. Um, everybody, hey, I'm Coach Greer. I'm the head flag football coach at Columbus High. And um, just to give you a little bit of background on Allie, she's actually the number one wide receiver in the state of Georgia. She's the number one for her class. 
Um, she has over 1,600 receiving yards. She has 31 total touchdowns and 69 receptions. So to, to put that in 21 games. <laughs> Put that in a little bit of a perspective. Half the time she touches the ball, she's scoring a touchdown. So right, she does a great right, job. Right. And, um, you know, I couldn't think of a better person to actually represent our country. You know, when you think of the word country, it's not just the city of Columbus. It's not just the state of Georgia. But it's the United States of America. And that's an incredible thing to think about because you don't really think about it in that way. But she's the only person from the state of Georgia to represent our state and the nation. And to be able to play flag football at that level... She's a great leader. She's a great athlete. She's extremely coachable. She does everything that she's supposed to do and does everything 110%. She Absolutely. is the perfect player for this team, and she deserves it more than anybody. So congratulations. That's great. And so I know your, I know your dad is, is proud, uh, one of our educators. Thank you so much, family, for all that you do. And, Coach, we appreciate it. Congratulations again to you. I also want to say thank you to like my mom and dad. They've supported me throughout this whole journey. They drive me everywhere. They drive me six hours. I'm a little passenger princess in the car, so you know, it's, it's really amazing. I also want to say thank you guys to my principal and Ms. Greer back there, you know, um, for supporting me and making sure I'm just the best student I can be in school. Columbus High really prepares you for that, and I love it there. Thank Good you. job. Woo -hoo. We have another Columbus High School student. Congratulations, Cadet Caden Stone from Columbus High School, JROTC Blue Devil Battalion, for achieving the prestigious title of the best Army JROTC SA winner in Georgia. Among 298 Army JROTC programs, Cadet Stone's outstanding essay on the theme of service stood out. His insightful reflections on various aspects, including what do you know about the military? What should the U.S. military do to improve the public's understanding of the military? What do you consider joining? What would you consider joining U.S. military after graduating from high school? Explain why or why not. This remarkable achievement not only reflects Cadet Stone's exemplary skills, but also brings immense pride to the school and community. Well done, Cadet Stone, and well-deserved recognition. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, parents. Well, this high school, are we? I'm looking for the microphone. Congratulations. Thank you all. Would you like to say a word, Mr. Stone? So I'm Caden Stone, and I am a cadet at the Columbus High School uh, Lighthouse Brigade. And I think the thing that really set apart my essay from everyone else's was that last question of joining the Army after high school. That was something I've thought about for a long time, and it's something I'm passionate about. So I feel like writing about that was really easy for me. But, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Good job. Congratulations. I'm sorry, Major Tugger, from Columbus High School. Uh, Caden had been with the ROTC program for three years. Every year, he continued to grow. He, uh, he's, he's motivated. He's dedicated. And, and we are so proud that he will end up being a 2024 Georgia uh, SA writer. <laughs> Good job. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Sanders, the um, director for um, Army Instruction. And when I read um, the initial 12 essays um, that we reviewed each year, uh, we, out of almost 2,000 2, cadets total between 12 schools, we narrowed it down to 12. Then we selected the one that went forward to cadet command. And out of 298 programs in the state of Georgia, that is an awesome feat. Awesome. And Caden, we're very proud of you, young man. Awesome feat. Thank you so much. Congratulations again. 
The Division of Teaching and Learning congratulates Hardaway High School and honors its faculty, staff, students, and the entire school community on their incredibly significant achieving, achievement of attaining authorization to implement the Middle Years Program, MYP, of the International Baccalaureate IB Organization. Hardaway's journey as an IB World School began in 2002 with a diploma program under the former principal and current MCSD chief of academics, Keith Seifert, and expanded to include the career-related program in 2012 under former principal and current MCSD region chief, Matt Bell, extending the opportunity to experience an IB education to younger learners in grades 9 and 10 then became the next challenge for Hardaway to bridge the gap in the IB continuum from the 8th grade at Richards Middle School to the 11th grade at Hardaway, where the diploma and career programs focused. The process to become auth authorized for the MYP started in 2017, spearheaded by then-principal Matt Bell and continued under the joint leadership of former principal Christine Hull and current principal Marjorie McNeil, leading towards the goal of attaining authorization on March 28, 2024. The achievement is particular, particularly notable as it continued to progress towards completion even amidst the global challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Achieving this milestone was no small feat. It required extensive training for teachers who develop and adapted MYP unit plans to meet students' needs fostering a learning environment that supports inquiry and personal growth. The authorization of MYP signifies a significant expansion of Hardaway's IB offerings, making an IB education accessible from preschool through 12th grade at Clubview Elementary, Richards Middle School, and Hardaway High School. IB is now implemented school-wide at Hardaway High School, and every ninth, grade, ninth and 10th grade student at Hardaway is now considered an IB scholar, even if they choose not to continue towards diploma or career programs at the 11th and 12th grades. Congratulations again, Hardaway High School community, for this incredible achievement. Okay, so... We read all that, and I see Principal McNeil in the audience, and the Hardaway family, would you please stand? Congratulations to you all and for all of your hard work and the forward thinking. So congratulations. Thank you for all that you do. I now yield I'm sorry, to one second. Ms. Buckner. Yeah, I have a question. Um, the uh, middle school is going to start, you say, um, we uh, gained um, accreditation, as I would say, in March, right? Is that what I heard? And it, the middle school will start this coming 24 in August. No, it's okay. What we already have the middle school. This is the middle year picture. Program. Okay. This is the middle years program, not to be con uh, confused with middle school program. We already this gives us a full continuum of the IB curriculum from Clubview through Richards and into uh, Hardaway. So we actually have students will be participating in this starting at the, at the middle school level, but it continues on into uh, the high school years as well. Okay, so. We've had the middle school continuum how long? Mr. I was just wondering, is there a process for the middle that, school? See, that's why the principal has to be a part of this. They can had. explain it better. Well, this is the original principal. Oh, yeah, he is the original. Yeah. Do the middle school. Yeah, I know about yes, high Yes, I think for clarification, <clears throat> this... Uh, um, Richards Middle School is a middle school, a middle years program. But when they get to high school, we've never had the 910 program. It was just a, um, it was focused uh, on I, the IB diploma. We mm -hmm. put them in pre-IB classes to move them through to get to the IB diploma. But now there's a, there's a ninth and 10th grade curriculum that they can be supported uh, from, as, as it was stated, pre-K through 12th grade. So, there was not a program in the ninth and 10th grade. 
Yeah, all students are correct. In the 9th now, and 10th all grade, students and are, they are decide taking courses to go in. The, they can do the IB program in the eleventh grade. Right. Correct. Do, so to do the IB the diploma school? or the uh, career courses. Right. To do the. So, what about the middle school? What's in the middle school? Is that um, is there an application process for the middle school? Yeah, that's, in, call that's it? in the magnet process. Yes, uh, and, and at Richards Middle School. It's in the magnet process. Yeah. Okay, we, we already, already have that. That's, yes. That was my question. How long have we had that? I didn't know we had that. Uh, I would say since uh, 2000. Um, and we have, the kids have to apply. Early to, 2000s, 2002, 2003. And they apply to get in that magnet, school, that magnet program. Also. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, thanks. I didn't know that. I now yield to Victoria Thomas, Senior Director of CTAE, to present the CTAE Statewide Recognitions. After that, you will hear from Mr. Corey Neer, Neil, HR Partner, to present the Power of We Award. Thank you. Um, good evening. Again, my name is Victoria Thomas, and I'm the Senior Director of CTA STEAM and Robotics for the school district. Um, it's my pleasure to present the statewide recognitions for CTA programs. Um, in CTA, we have nine, now nine um, CTSOs, which are student, um, student career technical student organizations um, with the addition of FRC at Columbus High next year. So that will bring us from eight to nine. Um, the students being recognized tonight placed first through third in state competition um, in March and April. So we're going to have students um, being recognized tonight and then again at the May board meeting because we just got some results. Uh, we'll also be recognizing students from, for Cyber Start America, which is a national program and competition to teach students about the lucrative cybersecurity um, career field. So, and those students were the top 10% in the state. So as we bring in the students, um, if the slides can come up, um, some of the, we will recognize the students, of, of course, who are present. And so the first um, students that will be recognized are from Jordan Vocational High School. College and Korea Academy. And I'll have the students introduce themselves, give us your name, your grade, and what you placed in. My name is Kevin Hunt. I play, I'm from Jordan Vocational High School, College and Korea Academy. I placed first place in heavy equipment operation, and I'm going to nationals in June. I'm Jacob Waters. I'm a junior, and I won third place bronze for CNC lathe uh, programmer. Um, hi, um, I'm Ja'Kaya Allen. I'm a junior at Jordan Vocational High School College and Career Academy. I won silver in architecture, draft, and display. Hi, I'm Latrice Strayton. I am an 11th grader at Jordan Vocational High School College and Career Academy. I won silver at the architectural draft and design display with my partner. I'm Malia Hovey, and I'm a junior at Jordan Vocational High School College and Career Academy, and I placed first in mechanical display. My name is Zaira Zaha. I'm a junior at Jordan Vocational High School College and Career Academy, and I placed first in mechanical drafting display. I'm James Brooks. I am one of the medals instructors and an advisor for Jacob. I'm Clayton Graham, and I'm about to graduate. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the architecture and engineering instructor at Jordan, also skills USC advisor. I want to say these kids are brand new in com competition, first time ever competing, and they have made a tremendous mark at our school, and I really appreciate the effort behind uh, the competitions they had engaged in. Outstanding. Congratulations. <laughs> And if we can any have parents, any, the, oh, any parents, ahead, <laughs> all right. Thank you, parents. Congratulations. Thank you all for doing so well your first time out in the way you represent the Muskogee County School District and Jordan. Congratulations to you. Okay. All right. We'll bring in our next school, Kendrick High School.
All right, these students are winners um, from Kendrick High School. And if each of you would give us your name, your grade, what competition you competed in, um, and then pass the mic to the next person, please. Good afternoon. My name is Timmy Perryman. I'm in 11th grade. I go to Kendrick High School, and I placed third in the school-based enterprise competition for a decade. Good afternoon. My name is Kevin Graves, Jr. I go to Kendrick High School, and I also placed third in SBE competition for DECA. Hello. Hello. My name is Aiden Fuller. Today, um, I placed third for promo video and for audio film technology, Ms. Jones Harper. Good evening. My name is Savannah McGee. I also go to Kendrick High School, and I placed third in promotional video. And our teacher, you too. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Ms. Jones Harper. I'm the film teacher at Kendrick High School. I'm a first year educator. I'm just so enthusiastic about having. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Thank you so much. I'm just so overwhelmed. I'm so proud of these, my students. They are just amazing. There is no me without them. They earned every bit of this competition. And I believe we're the only ones in Muskogee County that placed an audio video film, which is a total pleasure. So I'm just excited to, to be privileged enough to be a teacher at Kendrick. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, students. Any parents? or supporters with you. All right. <laughs> good job, thank you. We're doing real good with parents showing for high school. Normally they drive themselves. They don't even tell y'all <laughs> that they're being honored and recognized. Good job. <laughs> thank you so much, good job. Thank you. Okay, our next group that's going to be coming in, or I think it's just one, it's from Northside High School. Right. Just make your way to the center. And then if you will give us your name, your grade, and what your competition was that you placed in. Okay. Hello, my name is Kahina Patel, and I am from Northside High School. I am a junior and I placed first in hospitality, tourism, and recreation for FCCLA, and I will be attending nationals. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Alexandra Greenfield. I'm a junior at Northside High School, and I placed second in biotechnology at the Georgia HOSA State Leadership Conference, and I'll be attending internationals in Houston over summer. Good job. Congratulations. <laughs> Parents or supporters of these students. All right, y'all drove yourselves. All right, good job. Did you, did you even tell your parents? Nah, I figured that. Okay. <laughs> okay, parents watching live stream. Y'all heard it at the last minute. I know that's what they did to you. Congratulations, students. Proud of you. Okay, our next students will be coming in from Spencer High School. Or student. Students and teacher, come, come right on down a little. Come on, Miss Hall. No, you too. <laughs> How you doing? Right there. Yes, ma'am. So, um, if you'll give us your name, your grade, what your competition um, was, and then pass it to Miss Hall so she can introduce herself as well. Hello, everyone. My name is Sandra Njama. I'm representing the William Henry Spencer High School. I'm a graduating senior of the class of 2024, and I got first place in DECA job interview state competition. Good job. And my name is Maddie Hall. I'm the CTA marketing teacher, and we're so impressed with her. And congratulate her on being uh, admitted into Westland. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, is there a parent or any other supporter? 
before she drops out the door. All right, thank you so very much. Congratulations. Okay. Um, we also have one last um, student from Shaw High School, and this is a, I'll let him say what he's winning for. <laughs> Okay, if you'll give us your name, your grade, um, um, what award you want, and then pass it to um, Dr. Jordan and introduce yourself. Uh, good, evening, uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Armando Mendieta. I'm a junior at Shaw High School, and I'm a top scorer for Cyber Star America on the Muscogee County. And I won a scholarship award more than $3,000 for the JAG certification for cybersecurity. <laughs> I am Dr. Jordan. I am the AP computer science principal's teacher, and I try to incorporate a lot of programs into our program, just supplemental things to get the kids involved in cybersecurity because right now it's a going thing and they need to be involved in it. And I'm so proud of him. And give him another hand, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's, that's, those are parents with the camera phone, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you parents. Yeah. Congratulations to you. Thank you all for all that you do. Congratulations, very proud of thank you. you. Okay. All right, that concludes our recognitions. I just wanna recognize my team in the back. Um, Cherie Tovey, our STEAM program manager, Amanda Tolley, supervisor for um, Shaw and Northside, and Jean Avery um, for Jordan, Columbus, and Kendrick. Thank you all for thank what you, you do. Thank you, Thomas. Ms. Chambers? Yes. So um, I've been thoroughly impressed with um, every child that has come up here tonight, but I'm also impressed with what they're being exposed to. Mm -hmm. And so I have a question about the cybersecurity. Are they able to take that as a course, or how are we introducing that? Yes, Ms. Thomas. How are we allowing them to have that opportunity? Because that is state of the art. And that is futuristic, so let me know. We are um, very um, blessed in Georgia. Um, CyberStar America is open to any high school student. So um, it's sponsored by the University of North Georgia. Um, so for the last, I think this is our third year um, doing that, it's been open to anyone to participate at all. Um, unfortunately, I think some funding there we won't know if it's gonna continue next year. Um, but, but what those students also didn't say, well, there's other students beside the one that you recognize, is he won a $3,000 scholarship. That's additional training that if he certifies, he can become employed. And um, there's an, a special awards that they're having for them in May as well, up at University awesome. of North Georgia. And we'll be, be providing transportation for anyone who wants to attend, the par I mean the students um, to go to that as well. Okay, keep us posted. Yes, ma'am, will do. Definitely. And also, you're, you're um, encouraging the clubs at the middle school, the cybersecurity yes. clubs, to bring it down to middle school as well. So yes, you are doing a very good job with making sure our students have every opportunity to be prepared. So thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Good evening. The April 2024 Power We Award winner is none other than Sadden Sumner. If she would come now, you would give her a hand as she comes. And the submission goes as such. On a daily basis, Sadden embodies all of the district's core values. She radiates warmth and genuine compassion. Often, Satin has to operate as a one-person show and has proven to be extremely self-reliant, holding herself to the highest of standards. Because of the makeup of our office, she's often left alone without anyone to immediately lean on for help. Nonetheless, she presses on, handles business, and does it all with a smile. Satin has played a critical role in the event planning team for the Welcome Back event occurring in the summer. Despite being new to planning an event on such a large magnitude, she embraced the opportunity with a growth mindset. Her calm demeanor under pressure, quick thinking, 
and decisive problem-solving skills were instrumental in the event's success. Part of SADN's role is to assist parents with various challenges, often related to the complexities of transportation at the start of a brand new school year. Dealing with these issues can be stressful, but SADN handles them with effortless grace, consideration, and kindness. She empathizes with their parents' feelings, respects them regardless of their behavior, and is dedicated to finding solutions to meet the needs of both the parent and the student. As a person that's responsible for facilitating the district's facility rental process, she works closely with many community members. Often, after interacting with Sadden, many are compelled to send emails, phone calls, and even give tokens of appreciation. She leaves a lasting impression on everyone she comes in contact with. Satin possesses a true servant's heart and has transformed the level of service in our office. The entire operations division is beyond grateful for her support, her kindness, and hard work ethic. She's a consummate professional and an ideal colleague willing to accept new challenges and eager to learn. Dr. Travis T. Anderson, Chief of Operations Officer, again, let us celebrate Satin Sumner. Congratulations. I'd like to first and foremost say thank you. It has been nothing short of an honor to have received this and to have this recognition this evening. And I can truly say it's been a true pleasure to be of service of our community and our students and um, to support the future of Columbus. Thank you. All right, family, friends, and supporters, please stand. The work family too. All right, congratulations. Thank you all. That concludes our recognitions for April. Thank you so very much. All right, public agenda, we do not have any requests, but I will like to say that um, the public agenda is a part of each of our official board meetings and is open to the public and the press. However, the board may meet in executive sessions. Speaker remarks should be directed to the board and shall be limited to five minutes. Citizens are encouraged to address items on the board agenda or to initiate presentations of issues appropriate for school board consideration. If an individual desires to speak, they may contact the superintendent's office to be placed on the public agenda. The board meeting or the work session is not the appropriate place to address either criticisms of particular employees or individual parent complaints when such complaints have not been first addressed uh, to the attention of the appropriate administrator for resolution. Citizens are encouraged to follow the normal channels to address individual parent complaints, which is through the superintendent's office. Now we'll get into our action agenda. Item 4.01, superintendent is recommending the appointment of Victoria Griffin to serve as principal of South Columbus Elementary School, motioned by Ms. Chambers, Second by Ms. Jackson. Are there any questions? We are ready to vote now. All right, congratulations, that passes. <laughs> Woohoo, Ms. Griffin. Good evening, everyone. I am deeply humbled and honored to stand before you today as the newly appointed principal of South Columbus Elementary School. <laughs> 
First, I'd like to express my heartfelt gratitude to members of the school board, Dr. Lewis and the cabinet, for entrusting me with this incredible responsibility. I'm extremely blessed to have the opportunity to continue serving my South Columbus Elementary School family of teachers, students, their families, parents, and just the whole community as a whole. I love this place with my whole heart <laughs> more than I can ever express in words. I'm inspired daily by the teachers, the commitment of the teachers, and our beautiful, intelligent, inquisitive students. I'm, all, of course, deeply grateful to my family and friends for their endless love and encouragement. Thank you for always being my cheerleaders. Um, one of my sisters and my nephew, they're here from Florida. My mother-in-law, who is a former educator, is also here. My kids, my son is here. And my husband, of course, and those of you who know him, you know he's always and will always be my loudest cheerleader <laughs> and um, a strong model of a leader as well. You've always, always been my I rock throughout my journey in everything I do. Lastly, I want to acknowledge the incredible legacy of leadership that came before me, and that is Don Jenkins. My mentor, my sister, my guide for the past 14 years. If you know us, you know we are always attached at the hip. You see it's her, raining. you see me, you see me, you see her. That's how we are. She never refers to me as her assistant principal. It's always her co-principal. And I'm her partner in everything. And I think that is what has truly prepared me for this new role. Um, I am keenly aware of the footsteps I follow. And I'm committed to building upon the strong foundation that you laid for me, Don Jenkins. And I promise you, I will continue to uphold the values of excellence and compassion that define our school culture. Thank you once again, Dr. Lewis and members of the school board for this privilege to continue serving the Muskogee County School District as the principal of South Columbus Elementary School. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, stand back up again, family. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you all for all that you do. And, and the school family. We love it when... Thank you, school family. We love it when the cheerleaders come. And we know, as you all like to post and say that you soar at South Columbus, so congratulations again. We're looking forward to the continued great things. All right, item 4.02. The superintendent is recommending the approval of the one-time retention recruitment stipend. Motion. motion by Mr. Cantrell. Second by Ms. Chambers. Are there any questions? Madam, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I would like to offer an amendment, a motion to expand the siphon to include others. CSI elementary schools that will give each $1,000 so that we can be consistent with the stipend given to the um, middle school. That's a substitute motion by Ms. Jackson or amended motion by Ms. Jackson, second by Ms. Buckner, parliamentarian. And just to, I don't think I, I heard the nature of the amendment it was to expand the, the stipend the stipends that are laid out here in the agenda item to include the um the um elementary csi schools csi schools that's their list the state the state designation list okay okay so dr lewis um Ms. Buckner. Um, would that be all of the CSI schools or just the ones that were impacted by um, the uh, reorganization of the uh, K, uh, uh, the um, K2? K2 through, yeah, the K2 um, school? I think the only one that's um, CSI is Dorothy Heights. If I'm, I mean, I stand to be corrected. That's so, the, 
Of the, of the new configured schools, that is correct. And Storthy okay. has to be the only remaining CSI school there because Brewer will be consolidated under a new designation, new configuration. So, so the, the other CSI elementary schools are? Georgetown and Forest Road, both of which will start into that progression this next year. So I just want to be clear. So we only had, uh, so we had $200,000 to what you're suggesting is reduce from 3,000 to 1,000 to ensure that everybody at all the elementary. Okay. The elementary. And just to be clear, that's different than the rationale we originally presented. Yes. Okay. Because our original rationale was the five year and the tough to, hard to fill. Okay. How much are we, how much, how much are you looking at more for well, this day, ballpark, I'm speaking. Based on what I'm hearing, it's not more. It's taking the $200,000 that was allocated. Right, just spreading it. Okay. Among three schools? Among three schools, mm -hmm. uh, two of whom will be their first year this coming year in the CSI status versus those who are in their fifth year. That was the, okay. And so, be, you know, I, I, support, I support being consistent. Um, and being fair to, because everybody is working hard. Um, and, right. and that designation um, is going to require um, some additional steps. And um, unfortunately, unlike what the middle schools had to do for three years, they had to have a commitment for three years. Um, instead of this particular recommendation for only one year because what I, what I can see down the road is we're going to be right back in this same situation at the end of the first year when there are no more um, stipends to encourage anyone uh, to not stay or transfer or anything else. Any additional questions? I'll be Ms. clear, our goal is to not have anybody on that list at all. But. Correct, that's the goal. Uh, Ms. Chambers? Uh, my question is for Dr. Lewis, just for a point of clarity on this. And I do agree that all of our teachers, not just the teachers at the CSI school, but all of our teachers work really hard. And it would be great if we could give 3000 to every teacher in Muskogee County. But it was my understanding that we had an overwhelming amount of teachers trying to transfer out of one school. And in order to um, make it appealing, this particular school appealing, that we were offering this stipend, my concern if we divide it up, one is less of an incentive, but the other thing is we still present it with the problem of the 16 teachers that are leaving the school we're trying to target. So if you would speak to, are we really trying to award CSI schools? And if so, then my feeling is different. But I thought we were trying to sort of stop the bleeding at this particular school where, where we had a, a lot of transfers being requested. So can you speak to that? Yes, again, I, I think I mentioned, as everybody up here has, we all know teachers work hard in these challenge schools particularly, but originally, the original rationale and proposal was addressing this one school at Dorothy Height that has historically uh, presented a challenge for retaining and recruiting staff to the school. And uh, based on the premise that the, uh, and that the, this particular school is in its, uh, has a five-year designation and tough to fill, challenged in terms of retention and filling. That's the premise, the two main points for the basis for that. Now, beyond that, um, like I said, we all recognize everyone works hard. Uh, we had some schools that came off the list and they got rewards and bonuses and, uh, not bonuses, <laughs> stipends, reward. Uh, be careful of the, the terminology uh, for coming off that. So they were recognized for that based on what you all had approved. Uh, previous in our, rec uh, our recommendation. So that was the rational, the original rationale for uh, this particular uh, stipend. Ma so Madam Chair, I, I have a question. Uh, she can stay. I'm kind of absor I'm absorbing. No, go, you, you can go on. No, I'm absorbing. No more yet. Okay. Um, 
So for the 24, 25 year, are the schools filled? I mean, is everybody in place right now? No. So we're in the process of that now. So the transfer is not closed. The, the transfer window is closed. We are in the process now of placing teachers and te principals hiring and, and interviewing teachers and so on and off the transfer. At which list. schools? All of them. Anybody who has a vacancy can, trans can re uh, interview people off the transfer list. Did you hear your answer, Ms. Yes. Jackson? Yes and no. What was so the, can you explain that again? Because so, from my understanding, I thought the transfer list was closed. The transfer and everybody was in place. No. The transfer request window to request a transfer closed on March the 29th, I believe. That's when it was closed to everyone to apply for transfers. Except, now we are, I'm sorry. Except for which schools? So, but her, but her, if I oh, ask her, Ms. there you go. Ms. You are correct that March 29th is when the uh, the transfer window window closed. However, until May 15th, due to the K2 initiative and the merging of um, St. Mary's and Dawson's into Mary A. Buckner, they are still doing interviews, and they have until May 15th for that to happen. For which schools? Uh, so it's a Brewer. Uh, those who are leaving Brewer and the uh, and Dawson and St. Mary's that are for Mary A. Buckner to make sure that every all of her vacancies are filled. Okay, so it's for Brewer and for the for the for the, the the merging of the schools for Mary A. Buckner. So what about Dorothy Heights? Retention and recruitment for. For Dorothy, there they are. We're still filling vacancies that way too, but it's not. Those are not from the transfer portal. Oh yeah, yes, I, I do want to say something. Okay. I have to say something after Lori too. Um, so um, I think Ms. Mrs. Um, Chambers said that there were 16 vacancies. As presented to us last week, there were 12. Now, if um, so, uh, um, if you, if as Mrs. Jackson said, the other uh, CSI schools, uh, she mentioned Forest Road and Georgetown. Well, we did not get transfer information on Georgetown and uh, do. I said, we did not get it. We may have it, but I was just saying, because you said we did not get to transfer information on Georgetown and Forest Road. Well, not questions. Right, but I'm talking, and I'm talking in terms of what has come up tonight. What has come up, yeah, because I, uh, and uh, I also would like to thank Mr. Uh, Dr. Lewis and um, Mr. Bell. They met with me a long time on Friday, and I had the opportunity to ask a lot of questions, and um, so I do want to thank them for that. But I'm responding to the information that was presented and the motion that was addressed tonight. Uh, but I also want to say that that, that information was not uh, presented to us. I think Mr. Bell or somebody is going to do that for these two schools that were brought up tonight. Um, also, if you're uh, the main goal is retention and recruitment, that's what I'm hearing that the problem is for um, Dorothy Heights. Uh, when you consider um, retention and recruitment, uh, retention and um, recruitment, if a school has vacancies, then they also uh, need to some incentive for retention and recruitment. There's a problem there. Uh, anytime you have, it's not just transfers. It's uh, if you have vacancies in the schools, you need to recruit or you need to retain. And uh, um, so we need to look at that part um, also as we get these new numbers up for, for uh, Georgetown. I'm assuming we're going to get numbers up for transfers and, uh, and vacancies. And let me make another point on that. And that point being, uh, we, would, we would have needed to see as 
the that information as of at, before March 29th, because as you have been feeling uh, sub, uh, positions, uh, the original number for transfers and recruits may not be the same because. We just heard that most of the schools are filled except the uh, Mary A. Buckner Academy and, and the Brewer. So that means that at one time there were transfers at these other two schools and vacancies at these other two schools that's probably been filled and the original number is not the same. So we have been given the original number at Dorothy Heights that was 12. So if there is any way, and you said maybe, um, you know, at she, she just said, we filled, you know, we filled the uh, schools. And so do we also know the original numbers? There were 12 on the transfer list, mm -hmm. but we added seven new teaching positions. 12 on which transfer list? 12 out For of Dorothy Dorothy High. High requests. Yeah. They didn't mm -hmm. all transfer, but we added seven. Mm -hmm. So if all those teachers transferred out, mm -hmm. our slippery slope mm -hmm. becomes an avalanche. We did, though. Dorothy and that's I, what we're trying to avoid. We Brewer were, I was asking. is the only CSI school affected by the, I'm sorry, Dorothy Height mm -hmm. is the only CSI school affected by the Brewer initiative. Okay, so what is happening now, Mr. Bell? We went over that information on Friday. Mrs. Jackson has brought a, a new situation in tonight. Mrs. Jackson has brought a situation in where she asked what are the schools that, uh, that are on the CSI school week. Two schools are introduced now tonight. Those Forest two, Road, Georgetown. Forest, those, and so those are the two schools that we are, uh, her motion addressed those schools. Uh, so. Forest Road had four teachers request a transfer. Mm -hmm. Georgetown had three. Okay. And, now and, I can't and, speak to their their. Okay, vacancies. and you said okay. Dorothy Hyatt had 12. They had 12 on the transfer but list. But they didn't all transfer. No, ma'am. So let's just talk about vacancies. As of right now, vacancies, Brewer has six. That's the new K-2. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorothy Height has seven. MLK has four. And Davis has five. So I do not have Forest George, Road or, or Georgetown. So Dorothy Height has, Dorothy Heights has seven vacancies. And 12 transfers. But the 12 didn't transfer. 12 transfer requests. Right. I think they're waiting on this thing. It sounds like they're waiting on this. The transfer is closed. Also want to yeah, mention no, we have not this, it seems like they're waiting issued on this. contracts. Mm -hmm. We have not issued contracts. Yeah, I know. And uh, I think Mrs. Um, Carter, Carter has said, you know, um, the end of that, because um, I know when I was working, it's like May 15th. Okay. Yeah, May 15th. So I know we have to wait on that date also. But what I was asking, Mr. Bill, is... Um, what we're what we're doing with um, we're doing moving numbers. So if we go back to March 29th, prior to March 29th, the uh, transfer list probably and the vacancy list probably would have looked different than it is now, different than the numbers you gave us because uh, Mrs. Carter and y'all have been working on uh, filling positions at schools. So I was wondering if there was any way to get the original transfer list for Georgetown and uh, and um, Forest Road. Road. Mm -hmm. So no positions have been filled at, and no, nothing has been done to Georgetown and Forest. Nothing. There has been no recruiting, no filling of any positions at Georgetown and and. Um, Forest Road, according to what you're saying now. Nothing? No, ma'am. Um, principals have actively been hiring. Um, I don't know those numbers. Well, that's what I'm saying. I can saying. tell you that Dorothy Height has seven vacancies okay. today. What, what you were saying, what, 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 what you inferred a few minutes ago is nothing had, Mrs. Carter had said, had said the schools have been filled except uh, uh, Mary A. Butler. And now... I was asking, and, and you may not be able to do it because the, the moving positions have been filled. Back in um, May, when it was closed out, everybody was working and everything was moving. Everybody was working to fill positions, to get the transfers, to do the recruits. Everybody was hiring. 
However, what I'm saying, back in March 29th, the other schools could have had a higher transfer list or a higher vacancy list before everybody went to work on it, before they closed it out. Everybody's working. Everybody was working. Nobody's staying still here. Everybody has been working on trying to get our schools filled for uh, 2024. So what I was saying, uh, I was trying to see what, the, what it looked like when the decision was made, when the decision was made to give this, uh, this additional uh, stipend to only one school. I was trying to see how the numbers look at that point. Yeah, we thing. couldn't predict because if you have 12 teachers on the transfer list, not all 12 of them are guaranteed. If they're on the list, that doesn't mean they're they're going to get picked up. That's all right. So on the list. it was the unknown. Mm -hmm. I looked at we have 12 on the transfer list potentials, mm -hmm. plus we just added seven additional vacancies. We understand. We understand. You know that was a scary eyes. moment for me, and I thought we needed to act to do something to keep the quality teachers that we have but the but the moment but the moment also? now is our vacancies that's what every principal is working very hard on to fill their vacancies and so just to bring us back to the amendment is requesting this excuse the, me the parliamentarian has spoken So there was a motion to amend and a second. But before the motion and the second, was it not a motion and a second to exclude? 4.02. No, there to do that there was, but it's still appropriate to make a motion to amend before you vote. Okay. Yeah. See, see, that was the whole purpose of me asking for we'll the We'll vote on that one, Key, and then we'll vote on over. Okay. Uh, uh, do, all right, Ms. McCray. Okay. And Ms. Tillery. Thank y'all. And I will say, I'm getting a little lost in it, and I'm sorry. I'm more of a visual learner, and I had asked for information on our supplements. I had been given it, and so I felt very good about what our proposal was. You know, the way I see it, I wish we had enough money, and I'd love to work on our budget enough to get even more people more money, and we can do this with um, more widespread. But I think right now we have a pot of money from the ESSER funds I very much trust our administration that they have looked to see where it is most needed, where it will be most helpful, and where it will have the most impact to help our students in the learning environment. And it worries me for us to come in tonight and all of a sudden change that, because what it was kind of amended to mean CSI. Now we're talking about vacancies. If we add other CSI schools tonight, how do we know that there's not other schools out there that have high rates of vacancy that we've now not helped them in any way? I, I don't, and, and this was the first I'd even heard of this amendment. Um, last week I thought it was kind of, well, we want to help Dorothy Height, maybe we want to help others. I never knew that we were going to come back and try to take money away from Dorothy Height and give it to others. This is the first I've heard of that. Um, maybe if I had a little more notice that that's where we were going, I could have thought through it better. But my very strong feeling as of right now is we do what the administration had wanted us to do, what will have this kind of impact. And if we want to do more for other schools, then we get to work on how we can find money to do it for them as well. Madam um, Chair. Ms. Ms. Tillery. <clears throat> and when I was adding up the numbers you just said, there's actually going to be 26 vacancies if those 12, because seven current, seven new positions, and then the 12 transfers, right? There are no 12 transfers. That's, that's the point I was making, and that's how the word vacancy came in there, because transferring is closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there and are no 12 up. transfers. Yeah, but they the, signed up. Yeah, it's seven vacancies at, give the schools again, because I'm talking about the CSI schools, because, and, and I and, but, and but I, I hate that that word vacancy is it's thrown it I off. I wanted to but, ask my question, though. Yes, ma'am, go right ahead. Um, how many current vacancies does Dorothy Heights have, like, right now? Seven. like? Yeah. Seven. seven, right. And then we're creating seven new positions. No, ma'am. No, oh, no, no that's the seven. So there were 12 okay. requests for transfer, three transferred to out, seven additional positions. Okay. So 10. Perfect. We have not issued contracts yet, so there's some unknowns. Mm -hmm. I just, so you're full right now. Like this year, you're full. No, seven uh, vacancies. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and then I feel like last week, uh, I want to second what um, Laurie said. 
it was very purposeful. It was for a reason. It was because of all the training that it takes to get these teachers and because they've been on it so long and making progress and they were, I mean, right there from getting off of it last year. And so we were wanting to encourage these teachers to stay because if they were that close, then maybe we can get off it this year, we can progress and we can move forward and the retention won't be as hard because they will have completed the paperwork and they won't have to do it again. So that was my understanding for why we were trying to push this and help this school. And like Laurie said, if this is a passion, then we've got to dig into the budget and find it for the other schools. But don't take it and dilute a solution when it's not going to create a solution anywhere else. It's just going to create, you know, more of a problem. So that's just my opinion. Well, my Thank you, ma'am. My opinion is we need to be consistent. We need to be consistent with across the board. And I, and I share with that um, because the middle schools did, you did $1,000 for the middle school and you made them commit to three years. Um, they didn't have to stay for three years. We just, we just rewarded them for three years. Okay, so the middle schools were rewarded for three years and I'm concerned that, you know, that we're gonna dump, these, dump this 200,000 and be right back here with that same vacancy um, and transfer thing, the way Muskogee County does transfer lists, you always have this transfer request every year. I mean, and um, I just, I'm with Ms. Jackson. I, I, I like consistency. Do what you did for the other CSI schools. Um, and The work that they're doing at Dorothy High, don't, I don't want to diminish that because this, this conversation is not even about um, the work that they're doing and the effort that they're putting in, but because we have two other CSI elementary schools, you, we need to be concerned that everyone is feeling um, the same kind of efforts of retention um, to support to support their the work that they're doing as well. That that's that's my whole thing about being consistent. My, Are we um, done? My words. No, Miss Chambers. I have I have. Who'd you go? Did you have? Okay, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say um, maybe to apologize, Mr. Bell. The whole the um, whole conversation has changed, and the thing that we were talking about in the office, I, I was responding to um, Mrs. Uh, Jackson, and I am, and I do do. Uh, but uh, for the most part, my uh, position was that there should be some type of incentive for others. And I, I think I confuse people with bringing in the term vacancies. Because in my mind, if you're doing retention and recruit, rec um, recruition, uh, retention and recruiting, that uh, vacancy is part of that discussion. So I'm sorry if I uh, brought that discussion in and, and confused people also. But that was just my rationale. Uh, I want to say, and uh, at any time, Lori and and uh, Kia, you know, y'all can always call for this vote, and we can move on. You, you know, so. Uh, but I also want to bring your attention also to um, Mrs. Green was said a few minutes ago about the uh, the uh, stipend for three years. Now, is this language correct when it says um, in this? language uh, on this um, what, what they wrote up it said they may have to pay the stipend back if, if they lose what does that mean that they may have to pay it back if they lose what scenario we would they not have to pay back the three thousand so if, a, a significant difference in this is that everything related to ESSER has to be expended by September of this year unlike what we had for the three years of the middle school. It has to be expended this year. Obviously, if this stipend is given and then say somebody leaves in, in December for any number of reasons, we're just saying it gives us an out to bring, prorate that amount to send, to give us of that $3,000, whatever it would be, they would prorate whatever the difference is for the remainder of that year, potentially back to the district. Okay, so... The way it's written now, it says they may be able. That, that means like, like they could just work for until um, September, October, 
and leave, and they have three thousand dollars. No, ma'am. Okay, That's what so we're saying here. This. Look, are, look at what you wrote now. This I know that, what I wrote. Yeah, well, make sure that it's clear, because uh, if you, uh, for a, a reader, anybody who can read this, the interpretation is that you can leave at any time. You may or may not. Some people can keep it, and some people cannot, because it says you may be able to. To so clarify, let, let's clarify that. I put that in May down. because there may be some extenuating circumstance. Whenever you say always and never, you run yourself into a, um, you put but yourself into a corner. So the intent is that if you leave prior to fulfilling your obligation for the calendar year of the 24-25 school year, you would be required to repay at a prorated basis. That said, there may be some issue that occurs that it's some kind of a medical I don't know what it might be but that gives us the out to give us if there is an extenuating circumstance that we may I just don't like to ever say always and never because there are extenuating circumstances and that's why that's there but the expectation would be and the way it was written was the intent that anybody who would leave prior to completing the obligations of the stipend would have to uh, repay that to the district in a prorated basis because all funds based on ESSER have to be expended by the end of September of this year. We can't extend it month to month past September. What, what you said should be in here. What you, what, you, what you intended should be in here. What you have said is that it may be able, and that means that it may I'll be happy to not. amend it accordingly, depending on what Thank the board's you. pleasure is that. on this particular matter. Okay. So for me, Dr. Lewis, yes, um, I think you're go going to have to be very clear for me what your intention is, because we keep going back to let's give something to all the CSI schools. And if that is the intent, then I believe in being consistent. But if we are trying to solve a problem, and the problem is at Dorothy Heights, and we want to ensure the health of that school, I don't want to undermine that by spreading it out. So I need to know clearly, are we, what is the intent? Are we trying to say, hey, let's pack every CSI school on the back? Because it is hard work. Or are we having, do we have a problem at one school? I mean, paint a clear picture and, so that we can make a sound decision. So, because if we're, if we're just trying to um, show all the CSI schools, I think you're right, we'd be consistent. But if we have a bleeding problem that we're trying to solve, I think it undermines um, trying to keep people there if we lessen what we're giving them and spread it out. That means they could go to any school, not just the one where we have the problem. So please paint a clear picture for us on if, the, if we're in a critical state. If we're not in a critical state, then, then my thought process may be different. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's important that we discuss what a five-year CSI school is mm -hmm. versus a one-year. Right. If Dorothy Height doesn't come off in the next cycle, they go under state control. And keep in mind, the so cycles that's what we're now trying to, to, to avoid. It, it's not necessarily anything that the leadership has done. It's timing. Right. This is a critical year. There's no guarantee that this, this stipend is going to do the trick. Right. Absolutely. There's no guarantee. But I think without this type of move, we don't have a chance. Mm -hmm. and, and let me just... And when I drafted this and when we talked about this was to be, to answer your question, we had $200,000 left in ESSER funds that were unencumbered for summer learning experience, just to refresh everybody's memory on this, okay. We are in a critical state at Dorothy Height from the standpoint of gaining traction. They have improved for three consecutive years. However, when you look at the historical longitudinal data 
of the transfer requests, the vacancies, and the performance over the basically the 10 years or so that the school has been in existence. This is not a new phenomenon. This has been an ongoing issue at this particular school. So with the one-time availability of these funds, we talk about equity in terms of providing the resources a school or schools need to be successful. It is no it's not lost on me or anybody else who works in schools that having the same staff or the bottom line, the, the, the majority of your staff there from one school year to the next gets you traction, which has led to the success we've had over the years with some of our other CSI schools getting them off the list. Dorothy Hyde has been a challenge for whatever reason. It spanned across different leadership different issues, but it's consistently been longitudinally an issue in terms of those factors. And that's what distinguished them as the one school with the funds that we had available that would be a meaningful stipend to say thank you not only for what you've done, but what we need you to keep doing so we can get off the list if at all possible. So that was the premise behind the whole thing because they are the only school that's a five-year CSI designated school. And based on the data we had at the time, and still continue to have, we're looking at the vacancies and or the transfers. But primarily we're using transfers because at the time I had to submit this, that was the best data we had at the time. Because the window closed on March 29th, and we were coming into this work session board uh, meeting time frame. So therein lies the crux of it. I don't know if that answers your question, but the answer is yes. I want to... And I, I'm like you. I would love to be able to do this for all of our schools. I'd like to not have any CSI schools before I retire or die. I'd like to see that to be the case. But we've made great, great strides in a lot of our schools. And you can see that over time. I'll just remind you, back in 2013, we had 24 F schools at the time based on that designated school. We don't have that now. We've made great strides because of some of the people we have in the audience and many people who went before them. People are working hard every day, but we have got to try and make sure that we have a continuing staff there with minimal disruption so we can build on where they've left off these last three years and continue that progress forward. Whereas Forest Road and Georgetown, they will be entering their first year of that. These schools have had to deal with these uh, ongoing paperwork and the ongoing issues that are related to the five-year designation that is challenging, the, the work after school, the tutoring, all those things. Um, so that was the premise. That was the rationale behind it. Uh, just to try and, I hope, paint that picture. But it's not at the expense of other schools, but it is about equity. This is what they need to be successful with the funds that we have available at this time that are no longer available after September 30th of this coming year. That was the basis. I have, it, well, I, I, I just really wish that somebody had been paying attention um, during these last five years of Dorothy Height being in this dire position because that stipend, um, they should have been on with the middle schools. They should have been getting that stipend with the middle schools. They should have already been on the radar. They should have already had that support in place. If that's the cure-all, we should have been, teachers are all the, whether it's a CSI or MSI, whatever the other two lists are, it requires some extra work, some extra paperwork, some um, extra commitment, and they are tired. They're tired. Yeah. They are all tired. And I'm not saying that not to support Dorothy Height because I think that we absolutely should support Dor Dorothy Height. And I'm we trying should. not to have an attitude because we should have already been supporting um, that heavy lift at Dorothy Height while we had the bulk of that ESSER funds. That's right. Um, but to now um, point out the fact that we're going to dump this last $200,000 over at Dorothy Height and, and the language is the language. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm just not following that when we have teachers who are tired at these additional two CSI schools. The length of it 
is a tragedy to me because it's, it's now the fifth year. And, and, it, it, and they're continuing to improve, um, which is an attest to the great work that is being done, but you know, it's a heavy lift when these schools are on these, when these schools have these designations, those state designation, it requires extra everything for them, extra everything and extra of everybody who's in the building, it, it's, it's taxing. And so, you know, you have to think about how do we retain, because this says retention and recruitment. Nobody wants to work that hard, so they get on the transfer list. Or they don't want to go over there when they do all when they interview because there is some extra everything um, when schools are on the list. Ms. McCray, I heard you speaking. Yeah. Again, I just want to say I feel like the people that have the most data, that have the most information about what's going on in our schools, about what's needed. And with the limited amount of funds that are available to help this, made this decision as to where it could be best used. Hindsight is always one thing. You know, again, I would love to have us find more money so we can do more of it. But for right now, I think with the money that has been given, we should follow what has been recommended as to its best use to at, at, at least get, and I don't like in any way the word dumping. I think this has been very methodical and thought through, and um, I appreciate all that's gone into it. Is this going to be a hand vote? Wait a minute. I, I, uh, I have one more th thing to say. You want to say something too, Dr. Lewis? Yes. And, um, and that is that um, everybody's working, and um, I think somebody said something about the other schools are, they're working hard too. Now, what has um, gotten my attention tonight is what Ms. Bell just said a few minutes ago. You know, I just don't want a state take over school in our system, you know, and um, that has been very impactful to me. You know, I don't um, now if Dr. Lewis and them that truly, I, and, and, you know, I, I believe that all the things I've been saying about the vacancies when you're trying to read everybody, all these schools have to re, um, retain and recruit because as Mrs. Green says, Everybody, when they get that, they want a job, you know, get in, and then they want to transfer, you know. But um, I just, you know, I'm, I'm voting on, on both, 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 uh, the, uh, on both of these. I'm going to also vote for Dorothy Hyatt, too, mm -hmm. because, like I said, I do not want a state-controlled school. And if y'all think that this, this is going to, you know, I think all the schools should get you know, and it's not like I'm thinking that there's a uh, uh, that this school, uh, Dorothy Height doesn't need this school. I think all the schools need money. But if we just think this little this is going to make them come off this list and keep our school system from having a state controlled school, I just don't want a state controlled school. Well, I would just like to make one comment, just in retrospect, uh, because it's been brought up. Mm -hmm. The three middle schools were brought up before, just a, a couple of things. If you recall, we wanted three schools of similar kind of, uh, when we broke, put that into place, to see if it was going to, if there was a proof of concept. Does it make a difference? If you recall, that's why we did it in all three middle schools, not a combination of middle and elementary and different things. Also, at that time, Dorothy Height was not a five-year designated school during that time. So those are just uh, important points to remember and distinguishing points as to why they were not included initially. We are now at this point, so we have this funding. We wanted to see if this would, in fact, make a difference. We have a proof of concept for the middle schools. If this will preserve our faculty and staff at Dorothy Height, that will give us the best chance. That's the premise and basis for um, the recommendation, purely and simply for helping them um, continue their progress and success. Beyond that, um, I, I think we all are on the same team. We all want the same thing for all schools. Mm -hmm. We want them to all be successful, but sometimes some schools just need something different more, and, uh, and that's what this is all about. Nothing against any other school, but for this school. All right, you got a question? Okay. Yes. A point of clarity, because 
I do think that um, being in danger of state control puts Dorothy Height in a different light. Um, and I would hate to undermine um, what the administration is trying to do for this school um, at this time. I also do know that we're also voting tonight on budget parameters. And would it not be cognizant to consider or to think of ways we can reward the other CSI schools by putting them into one of the parameters? I know the budget, we don't vote on to June. Um, but I just would hate to have a problem, a critical problem, that we are not addressing um, and to undermine that in order to, um, to, to say we're being consistent. I do, do believe that, hey, it's great to be consistent if our intent is just to recognize that they're all working hard. But I do think that if we're in a critical state, we have to do something. I would hate for the state to have to come in to take over before we sort start to act. And I know this is not a magic bullet, yeah. but I don't want to do nothing. So I'm, I'm ready to vote so, for you. Ma Did Madam you Chair, I just okay. want to say one thing. Okay. Um, okay. Um, as far as the state coming in, you know, I'm the representative for uh, Dorothy Heights, and um, that is something that I, I, I don't want to see that, the state to come in and take over the school. Sounds like we're ready to vote. That's a hand vote, right? The, amend, the amended motion. I mean, I can rescind oh. that. Hold on. Greg. So the, the vote, so the, the original motion was made and seconded, and then an amendment was proposed to that motion, and that's what is now on the table and is ripe for your vote. It's not the underlying motion made by the superintendent. It's Ms. Jackson's motion to amend it, to add the two schools and dilute the, the money from the amounts here. That's what you would be voting on now. Just, just for Robert's rule of order, we had a motion and a second to accept the recommendation. Then we had a motion and a second to do an amendment. What makes one trump the other? I thought that we had to vote first. It, that's I just, thought we had to first vote to agree to vote on the amendment. That's that's you what don't? we are. So, that's what we are. That's okay. what just That's said. what we're doing. You want to rescind it? Not yeah. not once it's been seconded. Yeah. Oh, it okay. has it has to now be voted on by the by the body. But to answer your uh, question, Ms. Chambers, conceptually, in order to get a motion on the table to get the whole thing rolling in order to have something to propose amending you have to have a motion on the table to begin with and so that's that's a an appropriate order to take so that and that's where we are so the question now is a vote up or down on miss jackson's amendment hand vote and since she wants to rescind it that ought to be an easy vote all right, so the motion is to accept Ms. Jackson's amended motion. All in favor, raise your hand, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Cantrell. You know, I can't support the Second Amendment because I don't know enough about it to support it. I mean, just to have all the rules and all the, I don't know how much money it's going to be, how many teachers. I mean, the stuff that Dr. Lewis gave us, it's all down on how much they're making and how much we're going to give. I need more time to see what this is. I mean, really, don't have to have a week or anything, but I can't vote for it right now because I... She's rescinding it, sir. She did? Okay. What'd okay. you say, Ms. Jones? I, I think she's going to be just going to read the amended motion, as she, as she said. Okay. 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 Uh, they, they said they we're clear. Right. We're clear. Going to vote. Her desire to rescind it will kind of charge our the way we vote. All right. Okay. 
Everybody's clear. We're going to vote on Ms. Jackson's amendment uh, to um, <laughs> Ms. Jackson's motion to amend uh, the superintendent's recommendation for the stipend for Dorothy Height. And so she's asked to rescind it. So that should be an easy vote. All in favor of Ms. Jackson's motion to amend the original motion. Which she wants to rescind. All right. All, all opposed. Now you raise your hand. All right. That fails. Now we are back to the original item 4.02, which was already motioned and on the table, and it's, and it's already been second. All, that's already on the table. So we are ready to vote on 4.02, the superintendent's recommendation to approve a one-time retention, retention recruitment stipend for employees serving the students at Dorothy Height Elementary School. All right, that passed. Oh, Dr. Lewis. Now, let me clarify one point, because I'm checking with Patrick Knopf just to be sure, because I don't think there is no state takeover. Just more intensive support from the state. But the state has not proven to have a lot of luck in turning schools around, so that's just more intensive support. Is that correct, Mr. Knopf? Yes. So it's... To clarify people in the audience, there's no state takeover option. It's just more intensive support, which means more paperwork, more of everything. Yeah, thank you. All right, four point, ma'am. Ms. Jackson, your mic's on. You have anything? Ms. Chambers, you have something? Hmm, well, let's try this again. Now try it again. Thank you. There we go. I do want to say that I think that Ms. Jackson brought up a great point that if the schools are doing something extra, if we have money down the line, we need to figure out a way to provide them some type of stipend, stipend if they are doing extra work. And so I'm looking at you, uh, <laughs> Ms. Bloodworth, because you're our financial officer. And if there is a way, I know it's that time. It's time for us to be considering what's important to us. And I think you've heard from several board members tonight that it's important to us that the schools that are CSI, that are having to do extra work, that they are somehow compensated for that. I think that was the consensus of everyone. And thank you, Ms. Jackson, for bringing that up. 4.03, <laughs> we spoke extensively about the personnel policy revisions. Of course, you know this sits on the table for 30 days. Um, so, uh, Ms. McRae? Yeah. So when do you think we'll see a draft of what now is kind of coming back? Because, too, and I think this was some miscommunication. This also wasn't presented like we normally see it, you know, with... Um, you know, citations to statutes and different things that support it. Yes, ma'am. We're already working on it. Um, we have, as a cabinet, have put some and talked to uh, uh, Greg Ellington um, to make some suggested changes based on what you shared. We're reviewing that now, and we would expect to have that back to you within uh, the next couple of weeks, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I guess my other week. question is, I know that a lot of these policies came from stuff that's being added to a handbook that we did not already have in our policies. I mean, that's kind of right. Well, the, because we can't introduce the handbook until right. you look at the, um, the, I guess I would call it the, the employee conduct-based items uh, that appeared not to be uh, addressed in a potential handbook, we would look back at the board policies to determine where were there some opportunities and that's where we started. Okay, and, to be, and we will vote on the handbook yes. as well. Okay, that's why I wanted to make sure. All right, so 4.03 will sit on the table for 30 days and we will have the updated information. 4.04 .04 is the middle school athletic field budget. Motion by Ms. Buckner. Second. Second by Ms. Frey. 
to approve um, the next phase of the athletic field. Are there any questions? And this is Midland Middle School. I understand we have, do, are they still here to Midland Middle Schools? <laughs> You're, we're ready to vote now. Ms. Buckner, you have a question? No, I was just getting ready to make a motion the next one. Okay. <laughs> I was ready. <laughs> All right, that passes. All right, 4.05 is the cooler budget at Kendrick Move High School. Approve. Motion by Ms. Buckner, second by Ms. Chambers. Are there what was Ms. Jackson, second by Ms. Jackson. Are there any questions? We are ready to vote now. Ms. Ms. Chambers, go ahead. That passes. I, have a, I just have a facility question about food. Um, do you know where they are on the facilities list? I'm sort of seeing that it need the five-year facilities plan where we go in and repaint. I went out there recently, and I know there are some areas that need repainting. The locker rooms are out of date, that kind of thing. So I'm just wondering, where are we on providing some type of either upgrades or at least the maintenance for Kendrick High School? That's an excellent question. Thank you for asking. Excuse me. So one of the things that's important is that our next round of East Splash, the 2024 proposal, which is up for a vote, in May is approved because when we have that money, those funds through East Flash will be able to do major upgrades throughout all of our schools. And Kendrick is on the list to receive some additional make, um, upgrades. That includes the things you're talking about. And I can't help resist since you brought it up. Uh, we saw all these great things with CTAE and all the things that are part of the magnet programs, all of those high tech labs that we want to upgrade the equipment and the Programming and all that kind of thing for uh, high-end manufacturing, all that, that all relates back to the East Plus and our availability to provide those things in our, in our magnet school lab, so magnet program labs. And the, the, the next East Plus is on this May 21st ballot. Um, we're coming back around to ask for the continued and renewal of um, the Education special purpose local option sales tax early voting starts April 29th through May 17th. And so the new request for an East Splash to continue to support the great um, programming, the great um, tools and things that are needed um, for our state of the art facilities, what we call it, ways to learn, places to learn, support to learn, um, all of that will, and safety. Um, what is what our major focus is on this upcoming East Plus to implement and update those safety uh, procedures for the May 21st, 2024 ballot. All right, next is 4.06, the contractor cooler replacement for Kendrick High School. Motion by Ms. Buckner, second by Ms. Chambers. Are there any questions? We are ready to vote now. All right, that passes. Item 4.07, motion to approve by Ms. Frey, second by Ms. Buckner, the cooler budget for J.D. Davis Elementary School. Are there any questions? That was motion by Ms. Frey, second by Ms. Buckner. We're ready to vote now. Yeah. 
There we go. All right, that passes. Next item is 4.08, um, the contract. Motion by Mr. Cantrell, second by Pat Frey for the contract to cooler replacement at J.D. Davis Elementary School. Are there any questions? We are ready to vote now. And that passes. All right, the consent agenda. Motion by Ms. Buckner, second by Ms. Jackson. Are there any questions, any item that you need any additional clarification on? We did have a long work session and discussed all of these things pretty thoroughly. We are ready to vote now. Ms. Buckner, you had a question? I was just gonna make a comment on something. Okay. You still want to make your comment? And not on this. Okay. Not regarding this. All right. It's up to vote now. I can now. Did everybody vote? All right, that passes. Uh, Ms. Buckner and then Dr. Lewis. Yeah, one quick comment. I, I just want to thank our, we have two students who have sat through our whole meeting. I'm sure they had to sit because of them, their parent, but we still <laughs> were glad to have you this evening. <laughs> oh, oh, good. <laughs> All right. All right, now you can get that next badge. <laughs> all right, Dr. Lewis, thank, thank you, you all for being here. What troop is it? One. One. Troop one. Wow, go. outstanding. Great. Good well, job. Well, in, in addition to all the great things we've recognized tonight with the student recognitions and so on, I want to uh, just say again congratulations to all the page one winners, runner-ups, all the participants from throughout uh, the region. Uh, Andy Lukers here from Media Marketing More and Marquette and all of them did, did a great job of producing and product, um, that whole event. But I do want to take an opportunity, uh, don't want to select any one person to recognize, except that there was only one top teacher selected, and that was Mr. Jeremy McCrary from Kendrick High School. So congratulations to Mr. McCrary. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you so very much. We do not have anything else. We just need a motion to adjourn. Motion by Ms. Frey, second by Ms. Chambers. We'll wave goodbye if you all in favor of adjourning. Good night. Thank you.